Of course, it's important that we can not only run a hypothesis test for independent samples means by ourselves, but that we can also look at computer output of those tests and interpret them, apply them, answer questions about them, etc. So let's look here. We have many baseball fans hold that because of the designated hitter rule, there are more runs scored in the American League than in the National League. A researcher for ESPN gathers data on the number of runs scored per game, RPG is the or abbreviation for that, on a random sample of American League teams and a random sample of National League teams, right, for the 2006 regular season. Okay. So we have that. Verify that the requirements needed to conduct a hypothesis test are met. All right, wonderful. So the requirements would be, let me remind you back here, for a two-sample t-test, right? These are independent samples of each other because the National League and the American League are their own things, right? So it has to be the samples are independent, obviously, otherwise it's not an independent t-test. Um, then the samples are used obtaining simpling, simple random sampling, which we definitely have, and the populations from which the samples are drawn are normally distributed, or the sample sizes are large. N1 is greater than 30, and N2 is greater than 30. All right, so let me go back. Um, so simple random samples, are they simple and random? Well, sure, it says right up here that they're random samples. Are they independent? Again, yeah, because they're random, I mean, the, the number of runs that one American League team scores doesn't really have that much bearing on the next American League team. Um, now, of course, are the teams independent of each other in terms of scoring altogether? No, but that's because of pitching and other things. But what we're asking about is the runs scored per game. So we'll just leave it at that. And then we need to know that N1 is greater than 30 and N2 is greater than 30 or the fact that they're normal. So we'd either need big samples, which we do not have, or we'd have to know that they're normal. But the graph on the left shows us that these distributions are normal because all the points, because all the points are between the boundaries. And that means that these data sets are normal, and that means it's okay um, that our sample sizes are small. And that means it's okay that N1 and N2 are both 6. And you can tell they're 6 because it says right in there N equals 6. But And don't forget, Minitab, for some reason, when they programmed it, I have no idea why. They programmed the sample size to be capital N, which is ridiculous because capital N is a population size, but I'm not in charge of Minitab. They don't ask me. All right, so now we have our hypothesis test outputs for two computer programs below. And they are a bit different from each other, and as usual, Minitab gives more information, but it's a bit harder to read. Okay, so we have StatCrunch, we have Minitab, and I've already highlighted a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to need for later um, pages. So let's see what we've got here. First thing we want to know is we want to know how many American League teams were sampled. Well, we know the degrees of freedom is 9 right here, but that's not going to work like it did before because these are independent samples. So you'd be in trouble if you were asked that in StatCrunch. StatCrunch doesn't actually have any information for you to be able to figure out what your sample sizes were. The only computer output that does is the American League part right here and National League part right here where it says N is 6. So when they say how many American Leagues were sampled, it's N equals 6, and you know that because of that mini tab output. StatCrunch doesn't give it to you. All right, there we have it. N equals six. That's how many American League teams were sampled. Now, what was the mean RPG for the American League teams? Now, again, for this, you're going to have to look to mini tab. If I can't ask you that kind of a question with StatCrunch. So the American League is right here, and their mean is 5.185. And while we're on the subject, their standard deviation is 0.339. Remember that standard error is sigma divided by the square root of n, or in this case, s divided by the square root of n. So that'd be 0.14. A lovely exam question is to ask you how to get from um, standard deviation to standard error. So it'd be taking 0.339 divided by the square root of 6. All right, so now we know that the mean was 5.185 runs per game, RPG runs per game. Standard deviation was 0.339 runs per game. Now let's look at the degrees of freedom for a second. Degrees of freedom I highlighted right here in yellow, bright yellow, and they're a bit different from each other. So StatCrunch says it's 9.966. 
Um, and that's using that crazy formula. Let me go find it again. Here it is, this one. I'm pretty sure StatCrunch uses that. I haven't tested it out, but StatCrunch is using something like that. Minitab does as well, but then Minitab uses a different um, philosophy behind the degrees of freedom, which I don't want to get into. So one way or another, notice that the two of them are different from each other. One is degrees of freedom 9.9966, and one is degrees of freedom 9. Um, they're close to each other, but they're not exactly the same. So that's okay. Close is good. And that means this one's 9.966 and this one is 9. All right, lovely. And then I made a little note that the degrees of freedom for the two programs is not the same. That's all right. You know, it happens. Um, sometimes when people program these programs, they do them differently. All right, now what was the average difference? Now that you can tell from either program, although with Minitab you can actually figure out how it's calculated. So a great exam question for me is to block this out so you can't see it and then ask you to find it. And you would find it by taking the difference 5.185, take away 4.932, and when you do that subtraction, you'll get 0.253. With StatCrunch, you don't have that option, right? Because StatCrunch just gives you the 0.253 and doesn't tell you where it came from in terms of numbers because it doesn't give you that information. All right, so now the problem states that many baseball fans hold that because of the designated hitter rule, there are more sc runs scored in the American League than in the National League. Now remember, group one is American, group two is national. All right, so I put that in there. Now where did I get that from? Well, it's in the output itself a bit. So it's easier to spot in StatCrunch because it says mu one is American League, mu two is National League. Um, that makes it kind of obvious. Americans group one, um, nationals group two, all done. I don't think I actually wrote it in the problem anywhere because you don't need it to be given to you here. You can tell from the output. Now, Minitab has the same thing, but it, what it does is it puts the American League first here and the National League second. Or you can really spot it down here. Difference equals mu of American League, mu for American League, minus the mu for National League. So they're telling you what the difference is. So if that's the case and group one is equal to group two, that would be that the National and the American are the same as each other. So let me write that up. All right, there we have it mu for American is equal to mu for national. That's your null hypothesis. Okay, then your alternative hypothesis, let's remember they said they wanted the mean for the American League um, is more, people think there are going to be more runs. See that right there? More runs in the American League. So people think American's going to be greater. So alligator eats the American. It's the bigger one, they, they think. All right, so right there, there's your null and alternative, and that means that you're going to have this one on the right, where group one, because group one was your American group, is greater than your group two. There, I just typed that up. So mu one equals mu two, mu one greater than mu two. I'll be honest though, a lot of times I don't really care about the ones and the twos. I write out the word. It makes things be much clearer. It makes me understand things better. So don't be afraid to write what that is. It was American and national. All right, now the programs, however, use this as their null and alternative. Now, how can you tell that? Well, let's start with StatCrunch. StatCrunch is really easy to see. It's right here. See mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. Mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero, right? That's what they type. Now, Minitab, it's a bit harder to see. They're telling you they want mu1 minus mu2 right here, by the way that they write that. And then you always assume zero for the null, so they don't even bother writing it anywhere. And then, well, actually they do write it. It's right here. They write equal zero. See, that's test of difference. So you're doing a t-test of the difference. Equal zero, null, parentheses, versus greater than. See that? That's all you get in Minitab. So it can be kind of tricky sometimes in Minitab to tell what hypothesis test you're running. And that's the hypothesis test you're running. It's a greater than. All right. So let me explain why that's okay. Let's look at our alternative hypothesis here that we said was okay. If I take this and I subtract mu2 from both sides, right? I do it here from that left-hand side of that inequality. And then I do it over here from the right-hand side of the inequality. Over here, these ones are going to cancel, right? Mu2, take away mu2, 
gone. You're going to be left with zero over here. So they're gone. Then over on the left-hand side, you're going to have mu1, oops, 1, minus mu2 is greater than 0. Because mu2, take away mu2, is 0. And that's where the alternative is coming from. So they're the same hypotheses, they're just written differently. All right. And that's how to explain that. Now, if we had found the differences by taking sample 2 minus sample 1, if we had done National League versus um, American League in the opposite direction, what would that have done to our null and alternative? Well, the null wouldn't change at all because the null is always that they're equal to each other, right? So it's the alternative that's going to change. One sec. So we'd be saying instead of mu1 is greater than mu2, like we did in the last one, see mu1 greater than mu2, we'd be saying mu2, because that's our front one, is less than mu1. Then you subtract mu1 from both sides, and then that would give us the alternative that mu2 take away mu1 is less than 0. We turn it into this right here. All right, right there, I haven't finished. So notice that this one here was a right-tailed test and this one's a left-tailed test. Your null's not gonna change because your null is always equal zero. So what difference does it make what direction you go? But the null and alternative do change. Okay, so let me type that up. There we have it. In other words, it turns from being a right-tailed test to a left-tailed test. It, it, the alternative, alternative hypothesis reverse, reverses itself. All right, let's see what we got. All right, now we need to know the test statistic, but that should be pretty easy to find, as well as the p-value. Those should both be pretty obvious in the outputs. So let's look back here. Yeah, test statistic I highlighted in green right here. P-value I highlighted in purple. So let me type those up. All right, there they are. The test statistic is 1.33. The p-value is 0 0.108. And then since this was a right-tailed test, that means that our step four would be a right-tailed T distribution with degrees of freedom nine. You put 1.33 right there, and then you label your p-value as 0 0.108. And just a reminder where I got that idea from, let me grab this. You're doing a p-value approach, so you're using the right-tailed picture right over here with T0 and your p-value clearly labeled as p-value and T0 with arrows and everything. All right, now if the researchers set alpha to be 0.05, would the results be statistically significant? The answer is big, fat, no, right? Because your p-value, which is 0 0.108, is greater than your alpha, that is not significant. We would not reject the null hypothesis. Always remember that statistically significant means rejection of the null. That's the only thing that's significant to us. Leaving the null stand is not significant because you assumed it was true to begin with. The only thing that's significant, quote unquote, is if you could get rid of it and think that it's something else. And it just occurred to me, I kind of like better putting the, the less than with a slash through it, or you could say greater than, either one. But basically you're saying the p-value is not less than your alpha, and that's what you need. And since you did not reject, when you do not reject the null hypothesis, that means there is not enough evidence to support our claim. So we'd say there is not enough evidence, right? Not goes with not. Um, to support the claim that the National League has more runs than the American League. Oh, wasn't it vice versa? The American League has more runs than the National. Let me go check that. Oh, right, right here. More runs scored in the American League. I have it reversed in my explanation. Let me fix that. There. So there's not enough evidence to support the claim that the American League team has more runs than the National League team, despite the designated hitter rule. Now, I added this question in because it's a, a it's helpful to remember this. If you, the decision you made is incorrect, if this decision is incorrect, what type of error would you be making? Explain. Well, back in 10.1, we said that if you do not reject the null hypothesis and the alternative was true, that's a type 2 error. So that's the error you'd be making. You'd be making a type 2 error because you did not reject the null hypothesis except it was false and the alternative was true. So if our decision above was incorrect because we did not reject the null, that would be a type 2 error. It's good to be reminded of that stuff from way back in chapter 10.